In this video, we're going to extend what we were doing in the previous video, and we're going to look at another example of a type 2 problem, where in this case, the type 2 problem still involves determining the equilibrium concentrations um, from initial concentrations and K. So it's the same exact setup. The only difference here is that we're going to have two different initial concentrations. So unlike the last one where the initial concentrations for H2 and I2 were the same, here we're going to have two different initial concentrations. Okay, so let's start by writing out our K equation for this guy. In the that's our products divided by our reactants, so that's going to be the concentration of H2 and I2. And again, we always write little E's just to make sure that we remember that that K equation is only accepting um, values of concentration at equilibrium. And so there's a slight difference in this problem from the last one. You'll notice that we have one mole in one liter and two moles in one liter, so two different concentrations. So let's start to set that up. So our initial concentration of H2 is going to equal 1.00 moles divided by 1.00 liters, which is equal to 1.00 molar. And our concentration of I2 initial is going to equal 2.00 moles divided by 1.00 liters to give us 2.00 molar. So that's, that's the difference right here. This is where the setup gets a little different. And let's, let's look at this as we get into the ice table. So the ice table is going to be very similar. We have H2, I2, and we have HI at the top. And we have initial change and equilibrium. So here we're going to have 1.00 molar initially, 2.00 molar initially, and uh, we're going to have 0 molar initially. So uh, in this case, we're going to have um, minus x, minus x, and plus 2x. The stoichiometry is the same as the last one. So we're going to have 1.00 molar minus x, 2.00 molar minus x, and we're going to have 2x. So at this stage, all of the setup has been the same, and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take those, and we're going to plug them into our K expression. So this is going to be 49.7 is equal to 2x, which is going to be squared. And then on the bottom, we have 1.00 molar minus x, and we have 2.00 molar minus x. And then we look to see, can we simplify this by taking a square root? And what you'll notice is that you cannot, right? So before in the previous one, because we had the same concentrations, that allowed us to um, simplify by making this bottom part just simply a squared and we could take the square root. Now we can no longer do that. So what's going to wind up happening is, is we're going to have to actually solve this thing as a full-blown quadratic. So um, a first thing to do is you can do your, you know, your crisscross method where you do um, you know, the inside times the outside and then the outside times the inside. Um, and that's going to get you the bottom part. So if you cross multiply all those things, we're going to get 49.7 and combined terms um, is equal to X uh, is going to equal um, on top. So let's deal with the top first. So if we take 2X squared, we have to square the 2 and we have to square the X. So we're going to get 4X squared on top. And then if you do your, your cross multiplication on the bottom to get everything through and simplify, you should get x squared minus 3.00x plus 2.00 on the bottom. And so, you know, now you have to kind of just simplify everything and get everything sort of organized. So the way that I like to do that with this uh, to make life a little easier is um, I like to bring up my x squared. I basically like to kind of jog things around so that what I wind up having is x squared minus 3.00x plus 2.00. So I bring that up and then I bring my uh, 49.7 down uh, beneath my x squared. And so what you get is you get um, 0.0804x squared is equal to x squared minus 3.00x plus 2.00. And then if you bring the uh, minus point, if you subtract 0.0804x squared from both sides, what you wind up getting for the final is as follows. You get this, 0.920x squared minus 3.00x plus two is equal to zero. Now you can do this using the, um, you can do this using the quadratic. So the quadratic equation, um, I'm going to write it up here just so that you have it is equal is X is equal to, 
um, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And so remember, this is the a, this is the b, and this is the c that goes into that calculation. So that's one way to solve this. Or if you have a more advanced calculator, um, many of the modern, you know, graphing calculators and the modern, um, like TI 36x, have quadratic solvers already built in. You just type in the a, the b, and the c, and then it will spit out the roots. Uh, my recommendation is to, you know, have a calculator that can do that because uh, it just makes life a lot easier. Um, but you most certainly can plug into the quadratic equation and do it. Just be careful. Um, and when you do this, you're going to get two roots. Uh, so again, the quadratic equation is going to solve it and it's going to give you two possible roots. And the two roots are going to be um, x1 is equal to 2.326 and x2 is going to be equal to 0 0.934. And uh, these have uh, units of molar. So you're going to have to make a decision as to which one of these makes sense. And um, we're going to exclude x1 off the bat because if you look, if we try to subtract 2.326 from one molar, which would be this one, we would get a non-realistic answer, right? So if you took one molar minus 2.326 molar, you'd get a negative number. So in this case, we're going to exclude that value of x. Okay, so now that we have our root of choice, our, we're de we decided that x is going to be equal to 0.934 molar, we have to go in and we have to solve for the concentration. So uh, our concentration of H2 is going to equal 1.00 molar minus 0.934 molar. And so that is going to give us a solution of, let me just look it up on my piece of paper here, 0 0.066 molar. Our concentration of I2 is going to equal 2.00 molar minus 0.934 molar. So that is going to give us 1.066 molar. And our concentration of HI is going to equal 2 times 0 0.934 molar based on, and I'm getting, this is coming from this table. So I'm plugging in the value of X that we had into each one of these um, uh, entries into the equilibrium and that's going to give us 1.868 molar and with proper significant figures um, we would have uh, 0 0.0660 oh, I'm sorry 0 0.066 uh, with an underline under the 6 and so that would be how you would come up with the equilibrium concentration so the, these are the equilibrium concentrations for the H2, the I2 and the HI and so again, the difference comes at this stage when you go to plug this all into the K equation, you have to decide at that point whether that K equation can be solved um, by taking a square root on both sides, that's the easy way, the non-quadratic way, or whether you have to go the full-blown algebraic way of, of solving it for, um, of solving it for, uh, with a quadratic and, and reorganizing things to get it as X squared plus something X plus something is equal to zero. Okay, so because this is a really good um, type of problem to try on your own, um, the reason for that is because, as you noticed, I did all that algebra, and I, I did leave out a number of steps. Uh, most of it is just algebraic steps, adding, subtracting, cross-multiplying. Um, but, and you know, I gave you basically the gist of it. Um, but what you should do is you should try this one on your own. So lecture problem five, there are two, um, there are two, there are two questions that are on the same slide. We did the first one, and then there is a second one that sets everything up very similarly, except that it's a, just a different problem. So it's going to be a different K, a different, um, you know, a different compound, and then you have to solve it. So uh, in this case, you know, you know that you're going to be going into it needing to solve a quadratic. See if you can solve it all out and get the correct answer. And the correct answer for this last problem, uh, I will give you the concentration of the, I will give you the final concentration. So. And for this problem, the concentration of PCL5 at equilibrium is equal to 0 0.865 molar. The concentration of PCL3 at equilibrium is equal to the concentration of Cl2. 
which is equal to 0 0.135 molar. And so if you can get those, that means that you are doing a good job and you know how to solve these problems.